Welcome to the Crimson Engine. My name is Rubidium. Uh, this is the first of a series of videos I'm going to be doing interviewing other filmmakers and creators. Today I am really, really uh, happy to have Scott from The Phoenician Sailor um, talking with me. Uh, he is a filmmaker in a very different way than I am, um, but uh, very successful at creating a community around uh, his art and the films that he makes. And I thought it would be great to um, check in with him, get to know him a little bit, and talk about, uh, you know, how he makes his films, how he works, how he's developed as a filmmaker, and also, you know, how he comes up with ideas um, and, you know, the work that he does on YouTube. So, um, Scott, th very happy to have you here. It's great to be here. I'm, I'm honored. I've been watching your channel uh, for months. It's been informing me. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, great. I'm really glad. The videos are never a waste if people are, uh, are getting something from them. Could you just give us a little rundown on, on who you are, um, what your Phoenician Sailor channel uh, does, and, and, and how, how the current setup that you're shooting on right now? Sure, yeah. Um, <clears throat> my name's Scott, uh, and I have a channel kind of alter ego channel uh, that goes under the name Phoenician Sailor and what I do there are mostly ASMR videos um, not exclusively but uh, the bulk of them are or they, they play with the ASMR format um, I've been doing it for maybe four years at this point something like that and mm -hmm. uh, as I've <laughs> as I've gone through as I've progressed I've constantly i've always been like a gearhead uh since i was really young so um i progressed through the gear in fact i think the technology brought me to storytelling as much as the inverse you know um mm -hmm. and so i've sort of gone through i started with uh, a really old uh, a canon rebel t2i i think was the first camera i ever had mm -hmm. and i'm mm -hmm. currently uh actually thanks to you using the uh, canon c200 um which i love <laughs> you know um, <laughs> in the days before uh, dual pixel autofocus had you ever done a whole video only to find it was out of focus once you started editing it uh well so i i didn't run into that problem because a lot a lot of the the videos that i do it's just me sitting in place like talking so there's not mm -hmm. uh my problem would be that you would just see me look off camera all the time because I would just be constantly mm. looking to see if I was in focus. Uh, so mm. rather, <laughs> I, I kind of I, I had the problems that came around came about from not having autofocus, but they mm. manifested as just why is this guy looking off to the right all the time or looking down below all the time? Yeah, you make some of the definitely some of the highest production value and some of the most creative um, ASMR videos on YouTube. Uh, I'll leave a link, like an explain a link what ASMR is in the in the show notes so that um we don't you know we don't eat up people's time because right. I, I know a lot of people coming from your channel are already uh very familiar with it what prompted you to um kind of take things to the next level like most of those videos are just people talking to the camera you've you've done themes you've done like blade runner tribute sort of um van Kompf test videos you've done edgar Allan poe stuff um what was the what was the spark that kind of took you off in that like high, high production value genre um, direction? Uh, I think uh, first of all, thank you. That's super kind of you, of you to say. Um, <laughs> I think what it was was I I was looking for differentiators, um, mm -hmm. and early on, um, I, I always wrote. I was always, uh, you know, at school or once I got out of school, was always writing short stories. Um, and I was always sort of a tech head. Um, and so I was looking, I think, for something that brought those things together. And I had made videos before and been into videography before. Uh, I think maybe uh, the same path that a lot of people started into videography, at least uh, older people, you know, when I had my first child. Uh, I started being interested in, you know, filming what they were doing. And mm -hmm. this was right around the time when all of that stuff was blowing up. I mean, it was, things were changing so fast and, um, you know, you were, you were getting results and images that, you know, you couldn't even imagine, or you couldn't imagine that would be available on a consumer mm. or prosumer level, um, a couple yeah. of years earlier. And it's still, it's weird. We got to hit Moore's law at some point. There's got to be diminishing returns somewhere. Uh, but it seems like we're still, uh, progressing at a really, really fast rate. 
and things are getting yeah. better and better faster and faster. So the only thing that like you can invest money in really is is lenses, right? It seems like that's the only thing that mm. that doesn't lose half its value the moment you walk it off the lot, right? You're, are you a you're a solo f- filmmaker for your YouTube videos? You're pretty much your ca- your cast and crew, right? Yes, yeah. Mm-hmm. I've I've worked with I've collaborated with other uh, people in the past, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. but that's the exception. Yeah, ninety. 95% of the time it's just me in a room uh, acting so how do you feel um, <laughs> and I have the same issue with with shooting these videos for YouTube but I'm starting to take BTS along on my commercial shoots and my uh, my like short film shoots um, and it I really struggle with uh, it. I tend to bring stuff along to document the process but then once I'm at the shoot and I kind of like get into the get into the mindset <laughs> of total directal focus i you know the the bts is a total distraction i don't even want to t- i don't want to even talk to them um even though i'm bringing them along and paying them to film me and i wonder how you know how it f- f- in your process it is being both talent and creator and crew do you do you sort of you know how do you how do you quickly kind of like change hats between filming yourself and then be, being on the in front of um, in, uh, improvising in front of the camera? I guess it's tough. I feel like the performance suffers a lot uh, mm. in those situations, mm-hmm. and and just one example of that is the constantly looking off to the side. I mean, it, the, I feel like I, I tend to film really long videos. Uh, because mm-hmm. part of the purpose of ASMR is to promote sleep, and you don't want a video that, at least I don't want you know a video that's so short that someone is just starting to fall asleep and the video ends and they get a commercial or, or something like that if they yeah. don't have YouTube premium. Yeah. Um, so I tend to make longer videos, and I think, at least for me, I don't know how no- noticeable this is for other people, but for me, the few times that I go back and watch my own videos, I can tell there's somewhere around the 30 minute mark where I'm like, Oh, I finally actually started getting into it here. Right. Like <laughs> up, mm. up until that point, I was really just like looking at numbers and, and worrying about if the, did I turn the refrigerator and the AC off? Did I, you know, all these other, yeah, yeah. Uh, you were still in the technical, technical, um, or creative space rather than the performative. Right. Sort and of, it, uh, yeah. And it, in the moment, it takes a while uh, for me to forget that. And then, you know, a lot of times near the end, I'll be like, I want to do that again, you know, because I feel like now I'm in the right headspace. I just want to do it over again. And, and I've done that. Uh, it's one of the reasons I think my output is really low compared to most other mm. uh, ASMR content creators and YouTube creators. I only put out a couple of videos a month, you know, um, and sometimes only one. Do you think if you had, um, you know, were you magically to have uh, budgets, you know, five and ten thousand dollar budgets tomorrow for your videos. Do you think employing people to do all those technical roles um, would would improve the the quality, or do you think having all those people around would would influence the kind of like you know very intimate, very um, sort of personal tone that you? that ASMR and you specifically have? I think you could do it. I think it would, there'd be like a learning curve, right? And, and mm. Uh, mm. it also would depend on the people because there's a bit of that when, I, when I've when i worked with other uh, ASMRs, even though they're doing the same thing and we both recognize, hey, this thing, uh, to some people, this this thing appears a little bit silly, uh, and we're mm. but we're both on the same page about it. But even then, mm-hmm. there is a... Uh, there's a period of time of adjusting. And there's one one time actually where me and a friend of mine who has a channel, uh, goes by the name of Ephemeral Rift, uh, rented out the Eastern State Penitentiary in, in Philadelphia, that uh, that prison in Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. Um, it, was a lot, it was a lot of money. We rented it for four hours. We figured that would be more than enough time to shoot a video, um, mm-hmm. but they couldn't leave us there alone. They had to have people there and it threw us mm-hmm. off so much that it ended up being the money was thrown away. We, couldn't, we could not finish a video. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really interesting. It's uh, I feel like um, you know this. There's there's two forces that are that are leading us to that are, that are shaping sort of the videos that we make. And one is the democratization of technology, where the means of production are getting cheaper and cheaper. But then also like the means of distribution are now essentially free. 
you know, how do you come up with the ideas for your um, sort of films? What do you do? You just you know, uh, do, do, do they just come to you? Do they develop over a long period of time? Do you- Without being presumptuous, I, w- I would imagine that it's similar to how uh, people get ideas for short films or whatever. I mean, it, almost any avenue, right? Like I have ideas that I've been thinking about for years. Um, Mm -hmm. and and then I have ideas that will be prompted by an object. Um, and I'll be Mm -hmm. like, Oh, I could do, I I did a few years ago. I did a, they have those what's in my bag series of videos, you know, that that Mm -hmm. are very popular. Oh yeah. And I was browsing eBay and I, and I saw this, uh, collection in an old medical bag. It was a bunch of surgical tools in an old medical bag, um, that was from world war two. And I thought, oh, it wouldn't be great if you did like a what's in my bag uh, video using something like that. And the idea is it's cursed or it does something to, to the person who's, you know, uh, looking at the items in the bag. And that would kind of be the story behind it. So um, that actually, I went ahead and bought, <laughs> won the auction, won the auction, bought the thing um, and did the video with that story in mind. Uh, but that was, that came from me just browsing eBay, um, mm. others will be like, I'll get ideas from other ASMR videos. I, I, I tend, I think I work better, um, personally when I have a pretty strict framework and ASMR mm-hmm. has a really strict framework, right? Like the viewer mm-hmm. is, a, the, the viewer is the viewer. It's a static camera, yeah. right? There's only so many situations you can kind of, um, extrapolate from that. ASMR has a whole lot of those constraints. You know, you can't have loud noises. You can't, you can't have gunshots, right? <laughs> There's a whole bunch mm-hmm. of stuff that you really can't do and still call it ASMR. Uh, even moving the mm-hmm. camera is difficult. Um, having multiple mm-hmm. shots is difficult because the, the, the premise is it's the POV of the viewer. Although mm-hmm. people, you know, people will break that a little bit and, and push that a little bit. And that seems to be a malleable boundary. Uh, but I think having mm-hmm. those boundaries, uh, helps me come up with well given these given this infrastructure what pieces can i can i bend you know and that haven't been bent before or at least haven't mm-hmm. been bent in this particular way in the way that you're doing yeah <laughs> yeah i mean that's really similar to um a lot of people who are trying to create their first feature film or you know even to do a short you know the the costs associated with with film you have to keep everything down so you you know locations are expensive so what can you do in a single location yeah cost is expensive so what can you do with the minimal amount of people you know two <laughs> and I, you know you look at a lot of movies that are you know essentially like one room um you know closed room thrillers like like saw um is the idea of well i'm gonna put two people in one room and i'm gonna chain them in there um and you know why are they there? Well, they don't know, so they have to figure it out. Right. You know, in most Western films, drama is used as a way to captivate um, character, uh, and you have like a ticking clock, and you have these two forces opposed, and really the story unfolds, and people watch, try and find out how it ends. Um, but your videos, it's a little different. You're sort of like teasing out a mystery sort of thing and your relationship with the 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 viewer who's also a character in the in the films um i mean how do you how do you plan that is it something that kind of evolves um naturally or do you start out with where you want to get to at the end that also totally varies but i won't i definitely won't issue uh like uh oh this might be too (laughs) <laughs> this might be too compelling, right? So I'm not going to do it, right? I, I would definitely not do that. Mm-hmm. Right? I, I would, I would just mm-hmm. throw caution to the wind at that point. And I, uh, you know, I, I'm certainly not one to judge whether or not I've done anything that is compelling or not compelling. But I have gotten comments in the past that are like, "Oh well, I like this, but I can't fall asleep to it," right? You know, it's, it's <laughs> not, it's not something that I can fall asleep to. And, and I also, mm-hmm. but I have done videos that are, you know, and the majority of my videos probably are in this category. Uh, where even if there's like a twist at the end or something, um, uh, where you can either watch it in two sessions, you know, if they're, if it's a, an hour mm-hmm. and a half long or whatever, uh, watch it across two different nights. Um, and there's not mm-hmm. like a lot of crucial plot points where if you blink, you're not going to understand, uh, something that happened 10 minutes later, you know, it's it. there's, I think what I presume is that there is a level of distraction in the person watching 
And if I want them to know something, I will repeat mm -hmm. it a lot, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> as opposed to just kind of dropping it once subtly and being like, okay, if you caught that, great. And if you didn't, oh, well, no, I have to be like yeah. this it's thing. Not the, it's not yeah. Westworld, is it? No, it's, no, right, exactly. You got to, you got to, uh, <laughs> You got to assume that the first time you said it, they didn't hear it. The second time you said it, they didn't hear mm -hmm. it. Maybe the third time uh, they did. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> so that's that's how so I it's, it's that. like it's almost like a narrative uh, a narrative technique that is much more or a storytelling technique that is much more character than plot. We find out a lot more about who you are and who the character is who we inhabit through the through the um, process of the film, right? Yeah, it's like the, the third episode in a series arc, right? Where it just mm. kind of explores the, the character's backstory but doesn't drive anything major forward, mm. right? Um, yeah, I, I think that's a, that, is a, that is a fair analogy to make. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, with uh, this channel, I'm really interested in how different people, um, how people support their channels through, um, you know, through their subscribers, how, you know, they turn views into a way to, you know, buy equipment or promote the channel or uh, support themselves. Like, so this isn't my job. This is not what I do for money. This is what I do for fun. Um, mm -hmm. So I sort of made a pledge to myself that any money that I get from this uh, goes back into it. And I've been mm. completely, uh, in fact, you know, yeah, I've spent far more on this uh, than I've made um, either from mm -hmm. ads or from uh, Patreon. I have a Patreon account. Um, mm -hmm. I don't love plugging it and I don't love um, promising things because I just don't have mm -hmm. the time to do things like personal videos or the, the kind of reward tiers that are often uh, offered uh, via those services. Um, mm -hmm. so I try to make it like a, yeah, great. If you want to support me, that's great. Uh, if not, you know, I'm enjoying it anyway. Right. I'm, I'm trying to work towards the latter, but I'm terrible at that. But yes, yeah, so I'll usually set everything up and then actually record maybe five minutes of footage and then actually grade mm -hmm. it and see if I can get a grade that I like. Uh, and if yep. I can't, I'll tinker yep. with it and do that same thing over and over and over again. Isn't that, that's so magical. Like I used to do that. I do that a lot with the C200 and I used to do that with Magic Lantern because it's even less, you can, you can't meter it to the same extent because it's, you know, a hack, but shooting in your own studio and being able to shoot a little test, take it into the computer and yep. know that you're going to be able to get the image that you want yep. is like, I mean, it's like, it's, it's cheating. It, it really is. <laughs> Essentially. And yeah, and and maybe ninety. Well, I don't know how, what the percentage is, but at least fifty percent of the time, I don't go with a grade that's anything like the one that I tested with. But at least I know that's like my fallback, right? You know, it's there. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, and that's another reason why I think I don't make a lot of videos is because I'm doing that. Like, I it will usually take me about a week once I've uh, set up a scene, um, or mm -hmm. once I'm setting up a scene during the the process of setting up the scene, shooting, and then editing, probably. Uh, you said earlier, uh, ASMR is one take. That may be true for a lot of ASMR artists. It is not true for me. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I have many videos where they were actually shot on separate days. Um, and gotcha. you just, you, you could tell if you were looking for it, but I try to make it so that you, you can't tell. Um, mm -hmm. But definitely, uh, yeah, I am not a one take person. Uh, although the... I, I do find that I'm getting better at it. And the more freedom I have to fail, the less I fail. Mm -hmm. So that's great. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause it takes the pressure right. off and it, I feel like there's something, there's something amazing about how, you know, uh, Brett, you have 70,000 plus subscribers. Um, you know, the, even, even 1% of that, um, if you've, if they're, you know, diehard fans or like super fans, um, that's still 700 people that like really love your, really love what you're doing and are really reacting in a positive way. That's enough, you know, going forward to kind of, like you say, make enough money um, to be able to put it back into the videos and raise the production um, and, you know, production levels and, and let you um, experiment with more things. I feel like you're experimenting in a place that already has a market for it and you're kind of like, rather than doing something totally different, you're taking something that 
there's a demand for and then pushing it creating within that space like we talked about like within the rules within the within the constraints of that genre yeah i, um, I did cheat what do you think way, the, yeah yeah uh, by by sort of taking uh, a pre-existing audience as you said right like uh and doing something that i wanted to do and kind of mm. shoehorning it into that format um uh, it wasn't necessarily because i don't get asmr i don't get the tingles or anything like that um mm -hmm. so in a in you a, don't get high on your own supply no i don't get high. in a way i'm a horrible fraud right <laughs> but um but you're right it, it was uh for me it was uh, seeing asmr videos seeing what people were doing with the asmr videos and with the exception of one or two creators when i started three or four years ago now of course there's uh, mm -hmm. far more um with the exception of a couple of creators, there weren't many people that were pushing the envelope. Um, so I mm -hmm. felt like, oh, well, there's a, there's a niche that I could, you know, maybe get into and, and push a little bit. Mm. That, what do you think the future is for it? Like, uh, you know, for both your videos, like where do you sell, see um, what you're doing in um, five years and like where is ASMR going? Um, where, where do you want to take it essentially? So I've worked in technology and uh, game development and AI and all of these sort of future facing fields where, mm -hmm. uh, speculation on things like this is, uh, par for the course. And mm -hmm. I have seen, and so has everybody like seen so many things that were the next big, the next flying car, right? Uh, mm -hmm. 360 videos, um, you know, uh, virtual reality goggles, augmented reality, uh, mm -hmm. ASMR spas, like places you go to and actually experience live ASMR that I guess I'm a little dubious about almost all of that. I kind of feel like, um, one of the reasons that it's ASMR succeeding mm -hmm. is that it's sort of in its, it's in its, uh, I guess it's hot spot. It's, it's, it's hit its or its sweet spot. Um, mm -hmm. you can, listen you you have no obligation to interact with or um uh, acknowledge another person right so it's like mm -hmm. a kind of intimacy that you can kind of turn on and off at will without mm -hmm. the fear of offending anyone but but it is interesting to see how far it is or how much it is sort of um i almost want to say it like in this in this almost pejorative sort of like infiltrated seems like the right mm -hmm. word it is like sort of mm -hmm. uh infiltrated via social media and via all of these user sponsored uh user sponsored uh platforms uh mm -hmm. that it's now becoming much and much much more normal normalized the way yeah. i found out about asmr was at work somebody sent around an email chain making fun of it and that was four uh -huh. years ago five years ago yeah i remember they getting that e email and watching the video and thinking oh gosh i, I kind of like this what am i what does this mean? What's, is there something wrong with me? <laughs> uh, I think we'll leave it there for today. Thank you so much, Scott, um, for sharing your experience and your wisdom um, and your kind of filmmaking experiences uh, with what you do. Uh, I'll definitely link to your channel um, in the uh, in the comments. And then, you know, people can absolutely uh, leave more questions, um, find you at your own um channel and then you know i'd love to have you back into another one of these uh, depending on how we go and how many how many of these i do thanks for being coming along and uh doing the very first ever um of these interviews uh hope to do a lot more and uh it's been a really great start so i appreciate your your input i'm i'm glad to be your guinea pig and it was a lot of fun and thank you because uh i literally have stolen so i think you can go back and look at some of my videos and you can see oh look he has he has the lights in the back. He has the little fairy lights in the back. He has, you know, the one light in between. <laughs> uh, that's, that's not my invention. That's, <laughs> that's uh, going way back. But if you got it for me, I'm, I'm happy to contribute that. Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks so much, Scott. Talk to you next time. Thanks, Rubini.